You know who actually does normalize growing old or yeah. makes it seem cool is Snoop Dogg. Have you ever heard you ever heard him talk about getting old? Like he I don't know if it was a I don't know what interview it was, but he was like, he was talking about his uncle, who was like his favorite person in the world. He's like, shit, man. He's like, I want to grow old. Like, getting old's cool. And it's probably just because when him growing up, like, you don't make it very long in life when you're a gangbanger. Oh, yeah. So now that you have an extended life, there's a lot more to look forward to and exactly. to do. So he, made, he, he makes growing old look cool. So I'm just like, shit, it's all right. Plus, really, biologically, I always differentiate my chronological age so how many years i've been alive versus my biological age like how physically healthy i really am because biologically you and i both are much younger than our age yeah 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 i feel like we're gonna last a little longer i'm gonna be 106 <laughs> at the minimum yeah our, I, th I think our generation and generations after us they're gonna be really old people yeah i think it's something like 2050 we're looking at there should be mm. some technology available that can essentially extend life damn near i don't know how i, I want to say infinite but that's, i'm probably exaggerating uh -huh. but something extravagant for sure that's, um, that's not that far it isn't and it's kind of hard to wrap my head around it, and it makes me a little <laughs> nervous <laughs> <laughs> oh shit you got an interesting vibe about you right now Brittany. i can definitely tell you've been living in california <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> have people been telling you that oh like right now just in general like so you're, I mean, you're back here in St. Louis right now, and I'm sure you've seen some people that maybe you haven't seen in a little bit. Yeah. Have, has anybody been like, man, Brittany, like, there's just something a little bit different about you? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I was having a conversation <laughs> with someone yesterday, and I guess they were like, are you okay? Like, you sound, like, really flat. And I was like, man, I'm just chill. Yeah, you sound super mellow. I'm just mellow. But I'm like, this is my resting existence, <laughs> and so I'm just chilling. I have no sense of urgency for a lot of things. And, yeah. And I've just been pretty chill. So is there like a calmness that comes with like being back at home? Yeah. Yeah. Especially when like you, I can kind of just like put down a bunch of other stuff and just f have one thing to chill, focus on. Right. And so it's like, ah, oh, I don't have to be so constantly moving all the time. I can just yeah. like, relax in. Because you're normally like pulled in a lot of different directions, right? Between like work and I know last time we talked, like you're, you're it was school and mm -hmm. work and fighting and yeah. it's all of these things. Yeah, and so since then I've been able, to, I've like dropped some things. Like I've dropped, you know, the full time working. Like I love teaching, but I wasn't, you know, I haven't been teaching anymore. So I, yeah. Uh, then I finished school. Do me a solid. I think I think that Mike is rubbing on your chin. There we go. All right, cool. We'll get <laughs> so you're not there teaching you full time anymore. No. And so I think, yeah. So I think that has been the biggest thing, like moving to California and not working anymore and just like doing one thing. Yeah. Um, just and gave me the time to like be a, more mindful. Right. And so I feel like that has slowed me down a lot. Yeah. I mean, I've already been a pretty mellow person, but when yeah. you're constantly just moving all the time and busy, busy, yeah, you talk fast too. <laughs> just catches over, so you just slow down, just, just slow down, just relax. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So when you're out there, were you just you were just fighting full time? Were you working as well? Oh, when when I first got out there, I would say before like the pandemic and everything. Yeah, I was just like hardcore, just like wake up and Same. training twice a day and just in the gym. Yeah, just in the gym and you know had a, in my free time I had time to get back into some hobbies and stuff, which that felt really good. Like, yeah, as like, an adult. Like what? Um, like I like bought a whole bunch of canvases and like paintings so i like oh, nice. do like artsy stuff and Let's writing and stuff and did you ever try surfing while you're out there i did not i know <sighs> that's for sure something I still need to work on my swimming skills you can swim <laughs> very well oh my goodness i mean like i mean you're just feeding the stereotype i know that that's on the list though. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> that ocean water's cold though. It is. It really. I is. was just enjoying going to the beach and just watching the waves. Yeah. So that was where I was at. Eventually, I'll go in. I can dig it. <laughs> the energy of the beach is just so amazing. Oh yeah, just, I spent a lot of time at the beach. It's very calming to me, mm -hmm. like when I think about the ocean. But it's also kind of scary. It's so vast. It's so big. And honestly, I mean, I haven't been to nearly as many beaches in California. I'm sure there's some nice ones. But mm -hmm. I found in general the beaches aren't as nice in California, like, compared to maybe, like, the East Coast. Oh, yeah. Something about, like, I just feel like the water's darker and colder there. 
Mm. I could be wrong though. I it's just I'm probably making that up. But either way, it scares the fuck out of me because I just look at it and it looks so dark, and I'm just like, oh my god, there's like a shark out there, <laughs> <laughs> or there's this giant fucking whale. Or there's just I just feel like such a weak piece of shit <laughs> when I'm next to that big ass thing and just something about being in the beaches in California it doesn't make me want to like get in the water <laughs> yeah, I feel you realize how small you actually are yeah yeah like whenever I've gone like I'm not a fan of Florida like I'm mm. really not but whenever I, I get to that water I can usually kind of like see through it a little bit better so it kind of like just doesn't make me as scared i think yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> you can kind of see where you are yeah i feel i feel it um i haven't been well i mean i've been to florida but i haven't been like on the other side of the east coast to like see the beaches over there yeah but uh i think i like just the overall everything else that also comes with the west coast though so the weather's sure. nice too yeah that's definitely my scene much more than yeah. than the east coast that's dope man that's really dope I uh, I fucking I feel like it. It sounds like you took like that time to like really kind of just like reconnect with the things that you like to do, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel like during this COVID time, a lot of people haven't really been like we're all living this rat race, and not many people like know what makes them happy. Like they don't know what they enjoy, and then we've all been forced to just like be inside with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's probably driving a lot of people crazy. Yeah. But like, so for the past two years, up until like a month ago, I've been self-employed. So I've just had all my time just to do anything that makes me happy. So like, I'm yeah. I'm really in touch with like the things that make me happy. Yeah. So when COVID hit, like I didn't really stop doing jujitsu. I just did more jujitsu and I was like mm -hmm. doing a little less podcasting, but it's still doing the things that make me happy. It sounds like that's kind of like what you're able to do while you're out there. Yeah, definitely. Um, I kind of feel like, from the moment like we were raised that we're already like been been taught of what we need to do in life as an adult like okay you get out of high school you go do this you get a job you work uh you find a way to like create these things for yourself um and along the journey of doing that we like kind of fall away from like our inner child i've been reading a lot of books about this and i've been seeing a lot of stuff about it and i'm loving it but i really do like feel like this time I have been definitely getting back in touch with that, which that's where I feel like has been like the the token to all my happiness. It's yeah. like those are all the things that you like to do. Um, not the things that you have to do, but the things that you enjoy doing because you wanna do it and you do it when you wanna do it and like you get to move on your time instead of the time of like society and just right. you know, things time in general that we create it. Yeah. And you get to kind of just flow through it at your pace and it's not like that that's where i've been um and i chose like fighting as the main thing of wanting to do a part of that so that gave me some structure so it's not like i was just out there free willing but right with the rest of my time you're on a mission yeah 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 man it's so weird time is it's it really is a construct mm -hmm. and i got to a place to where it was like every day was just today you, yeah. Did you ever get to that place where it's just like shit? Like I'm just I'm just doing the things that I want to do every day. It's like of course like it's like yeah today's Tuesday it's striking day or like mm -hmm. but it's like I'm just doing this today. Like I don't dread tomorrow. Yeah, because that, that's how it was. Yeah. Like well, there was probably a couple of days where I was like, oh, it's this day because it's really hard. But <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it still came with like, oh, it's really hard. But after that, it's fight night. Usually, my it was always Saturdays, and then it's the weekend. Um, but then I was just like through the same cycle. Yeah. Every, and most days felt like the same day as before. Right. Or you're like on this just like internal loop that just keeps cycling through. Yeah, that's a good feeling, really. Yeah, you're like, oh wait. It's December already. Like how time, pre the 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 perception in our mind of like how fast time flies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would talk to people and they'd be like, "Oh fuck, man, it's Monday tomorrow. I gotta go to work." Yeah. I'm gonna say, "Oh, oh cool. Like <laughs> it's <laughs> Monday. <laughs> like I got shit to do, of course, but like cool. Like I'm happy with it. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I didn't ever. I never dreaded the next day, mm -hmm. which is really nice. That's a great place to be. It really is. So, what was your schedule like while you're out there? Um, well, like training wise, so I was also like, uh, living like with a bunch of fighters. So we were all on the same schedule, like yeah. just going, waking up, going to the gym. Uh, so like Monday through Thursday, we had 
like two trainings uh, each day. Yeah. Uh, like Monday, Wednesday morning were MMA. Tuesday, Thursday morning was like jujitsu, and okay. then at night we had wrestling on Monday, sparring on Tuesday, wrestling on Wednesday, and then like MMA on Thursday night. And then usually Friday was for like specifics, like if you have a fight coming up, you did some extra work or you do some extra stuff on your own. Yeah. And then Saturday we would run, like it'd be a track day or some run day, and then we yeah. would spar. And then Sunday was like an off day, and it just just repeats. Yeah. So, was there two or three sparring days in there? There was two. Okay. Was you just officially? Was, you, pra- <laughs> <laughs> you like to do a lot of sparring. <laughs> Well, I mean, I like sparring. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course you want the time to be able to, like, apply all of the, all of the drilling that you've been doing. And, yeah. And, you know, sometimes you just, you know, want to be able to just put it all out there and, you know, got to practice that. So I like sparring. Yeah. Yeah. Was gi or it was gi? Was jujitsu gi or no gi? No gi. No gi. Yeah, so we just did 10th uh, Planet. It was just no gi. All 10th Planet shit. Yeah. Did you learn some cool stuff? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Definitely solid. Obviously, I need to keep working on my jujitsu. Yeah. That's one thing I was really excited about coming back here yeah. is getting back to in the gi and doing some uh, traditional, like some Brazilian jiu-jitsu in the gi because yeah. I haven't done it in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, what the fuck happened? Yeah. What'd you do? Punching people in the face too hard and, yeah, you, you know, so now my hand's all jacked up. Did you but break it? Yeah, it's fractured. Damn. Was that in your fight? Yeah. Oh. So, I was, uh, like, finding many other different things to do, but... Um, but we did a lot of jujitsu, yeah. and so I feel like you can never get enough of jujitsu. Just it's it's just, it's literally become my entire life. Yeah, it's my obsession. It's really bad, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's become worse since then. Oh my god! So like, when when everything shut down, I probably took like maybe like two weeks off of jujitsu, mm-hmm. and then like I started going to like a friend's house. We were training in his basement. And then Mike opened the gym back up, and mm-hmm. then I started teaching 6 a.m. jiu-jitsu Monday through Friday for, like, seven months, eight months. Just wow. jiu-jitsu six, seven days a week, sometimes twice a day, um, probably, like, twice a month. I haven't been up there. I probably, I've probably driven up there, I'd say, like, three times, I think. I've driven up to, like, Mount Vernon to go train with those guys. Oh, just, okay. like, my entire fucking life has – I've just been just jiu-jitsu. That's it. Like <laughs> – and like when people are, are like, "Man, so what have you been up to?" I'm just like, ah, I feel kind of like a like a loser sometimes <laughs> <laughs> because like my life doesn't really change. It's just like, man, all I fucking do is I just train to kill people all the fucking time. And then like, man, I've never felt better. I feel well, like a month ago, it is. It, I feel I'm feeling kind of like I'm going through withdrawals a little bit because I just <laughs> got this job at first form and it's taking up a lot of my time. And uh, so like this last month. I've I've still been in there, but not you know six days a week yeah. like I was seven days a week. So like my conditioning isn't as good as it was, but I'm still really sharp. I'm just like fuck, man. I can just murder people right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's a crazy obsession. I don't think people understand how all-consuming just just combat sports can be in general, whether yeah. it's jujitsu or if Muay Thai is your thing, or just the idea of like learning how to like break down another human mm-hmm. is is fucking fascinating it is is when when you talk about science it's like it is a science it is if you want to talk about like i don't know it's not my expertise in the science like chemistry like all these different ingredients whatever you add together whatever <laughs> it causes this to happen but it's the same thing with you know with yeah. jiu-jitsu and in combat sports like you said yeah, so you can get obsessed with it. Well, I feel like it's there's all these algorithms going on. Like if you start getting like really weird with it, because it's like you're you're constantly problem solving. You're like, mm-hmm. if I do this, then they will do this, mm-hmm. and then it's like, well, if I faint this, if I do this, like you're like you're you're testing the waters. Always like mm-hmm. there's all like I said, it's science. Like you're trying to like you're you're trying to just experiment and figure out what will happen if I do this, and just just test things out and you just never know what's really going to work or land. But then there are these like laws like in jujitsu. I just know if I do this, then for sure you have to do this. Cause if you don't do this, then I will for sure do this to you. Right. So it's just like, man, it's just this infinite puzzle. I always just look at it as like a puzzle. It's yeah. just infinite and it's always evolving. Yeah. So like, I mean, like that reminded me of like physics and like, just like physics. basic, you know, movements and things like that nature. But yeah, like the structural things, the laws, like you said, but then what 
makes it even more like expansive to your mind is the creativity that you add to it because it's an art yes and it's like how you do it yeah it's when you do it it's you know so yeah that can just open up an infinite amount of possibilities yeah it's very expressive of your own personality yeah 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 i think i like that the most about it because i like you because then you use your body as you know use your strengths of your body to do things that other people can't do yeah yeah there's just something about like hitting like a good sweep for example Mm -hmm. when they just they're just helpless like they can't do anything about it (laughs) you have the perfect leverage you at the right angle like they feel weightless they know that they're going it's just like hey man i have all of my points of contact that i need Mm -hmm. here i just completely took away every post that you it's like boom you're going it's just happening it's just a good feeling yeah Oh God, yeah, jujitsu is my shit. <laughs> uh, I'm really trying to get a program going um, at at work. That'd be it'd be really cool to like teach all those guys at first form how to do jujitsu. Oh yeah, that that's like amazing. my big goal. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like let's make this happen, guys. Jujitsu can be for everyone. It really can. It really fucking can. So now that you're in town, are you gonna come? In, you're gonna come to the gym and roll with us? <laughs> uh, yeah i want to as soon as i can yeah how long are you waiting to for that to heal <sighs> when it feels better no well officially i mean you're given a time frame fool yeah i know <laughs> so long <laughs> <laughs> what is it like next year is, so you're here. how long your fight was what like two weeks ago uh yeah just about it's yeah it's been about two weeks yeah so, so you just broke that motherfucker so yeah. you're like well like march probably they they told me like six to eight weeks, but I haven't seen a specialist or any, anyone yet. But so, I've hurt my hands before, and so it just. Kinda so does that make them more brittle if you've done that? If you hurt them before, I don't, I don't know. I always felt like my hands were fragile anyway because yeah. I have my bony hands and stuff. So I was already running the risk punching people. So it yeah. was bound to happen. But mm. you know, I gotta let it heal. So um, I don't know. So I would say maybe like what. Uh, see what it's looking like in another four weeks yeah but i'll be here so i'll be doing something one way or the other yeah you said you're studying for something yeah yeah so yeah that's been uh, interesting too you should see me typing on my computer (laughs) 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 like hunting and pecking with my right hand yeah um yeah so i finally got um my um in my 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 national exam schedule for january 12th nice um so i've been studying for that this is for social work uh for counseling counseling yeah yeah still gonna be a counselor huh yeah i I know i've been this year i've procrastinated it a little bit like i started i was like oh when i got out of school i was like you know they're like you should take it you know while it's still fresh and i was like yeah i'm gonna study so i was studying but then you know then i had a fight and then after that i was like (laughs) i haven't gone back to it so then i was like all right everything that's happened right now leading up to this point feels like okay the time is now and so yeah i'm here back to you know yeah immersing my brain into it can you take it at any time is there like any sort of like limit to where it's like oh man you've you've waited six years now you need to go get like an extra credit or something because things have changed um i don't i don't think so if if, in that case it comes down to more of your classes and your transcripts and like your college uh your degree that that type of stuff yeah um like you have to stay current with that and like different type of professional studies and development those sort of things that you have to do within a certain years that's how they get you with that that sounds like a whole lot of headache, man. Yeah, okay. fighting's a whole lot easier, huh? <laughs> Got me jumping through hoops and stuff. I'm like, man, didn't I do enough? Damn, man. <laughs> Dang. Have you thought about going out to uh, to Kansas City and training out of Glory? You know, I, I, I for I had I had that thought at least one time before. Like, because yeah. as I thought about coming back home, I was thought about the different like places to right. to train and travel around here. And, yeah, you know, Kansas City is like you know the neighbor. Yeah, they are legitimately the best school in, in the state now. Yeah. I mean, ha- they have, what, like f- five or six people in the UFC right now? Yeah. Yeah, including, uh, what's that girl's name? There's some girl that trains out there. She's pretty high level. She's in the UFC. Yeah, Um. Megan, Me- is it Megan? I have I no fucking idea. I think it's Megan. Well, Megan is Anderson. She, is she Russian? No. Ukrainian? Bosnian? I don't mm, know. She's not from America, Australia. right? Australia. Australian. Right. Yeah. Australia or New Zealand? I think it's Australia. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, she's yeah. Australian. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think I think this. If I'm she'd not be mistaken. a good training partner for you, right? Yeah, she's, she's really not, tall. And yeah, she's, she's big tall, too, right? She's a 45er. Yeah. Exactly. Are you 45er? 
<laughs> what the <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I say that to myself, like, yeah, I'll fight him with 45. But I was like, no, just, it's called just, you know, having a consistent diet. And Is that what it is? Yeah, that's what I guess. I mean, yeah. Are you just telling yourself that? I don't know. I'm still processing. How hard still is processing. Do you feel good when you fight 35? Your last fight was at 35? Yeah. Do you feel um, recovered? No, no, I, I definitely feel so much better at 35. 35 def- is definitely my place. Like, it's just, uh, just like with all, like, the sport in general is just making sure that you're also just keeping your weight. Yeah. It's just hard to talk about this because, you know, the holidays just happen and not just playing. But <laughs> <laughs> those are the only situations that makes it harder is, like, More you know. Life. So, yeah. f- so 35 feels better than 45 for you. Yeah, I how mean, I mean, I haven't, I haven't fought at forty five, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, but how, well, how do you feel when you're that weight? Okay, you know what well, you, you know what you feel like yeah. when you're that weight, because because forty five is at least probably two weeks before the cut. I would imagine you're probably around forty five. Yeah. So you probably feel better then than you do when you're cutting. Well, if we're gonna speak in terms of like just me in isolation, yes, forty five feels amazing. But like, I don't know, like I feel comfortable. Like, this whole weight cutting thing, we've already talked about it, like, how everyone's doing it, and you know that, like, the day of the fight, people are, like, recarbing up. They're so big. I don't, I don't walk around, like, 160 to 170. Right. That's the difference. If yeah. I was 140 fighting at 145, I'm walking around five pounds heavier, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, so that's Which a good is, thing. That's how it should be. Right. You know? So, you... you I've fought people before who used to be 55ers and they came up to 70 and they performed amazing. Like, yeah. And I, I, you see it all the time. And I just feel like wh- when you just look at just like biologically and physiologically, like how every human is different and like w- cutting weight sucks for everybody, but for women in particular, like yeah. it's hard as fuck. Yeah. Like you're just depleting yourself so much. And then it, what if. What if the fight falls on the wrong, like just the wrong fucking week of the month? You know, that's gonna fuck up your weight cut, right? I mean, hormones come into a big, a, a, there's a big factor. There's just so many differences that I just feel like cutting weight is so much harder for women. It, I don't understand why anybody does it, but I know you. <laughs> oh my god, story of my life. I know, right? Did I just explain <laughs> the struggle kind of well, or did oh, I miss yeah. anything? It's, it's funny because my teammate was like have her here with me talking about because <laughs> when i tell you that like uh you could ask our uh, my teammates like if me and her haven't been more in sync than ever like yeah when it, and, it's, and it's the same thing and that's how we know it's like yeah just like this woman body struggle because it happens to both of us in the same time of our like fight camp and everything yeah um but it it isn't it it does is is it doesn't feel good to like deplete yourself to like to get all the way to this point just to make weight like I would love to just you know fight within five pounds of what I naturally walk around at you yeah, know that'd be ideal. I mean, honestly, if you're gonna say that you're this weight, you should fight at that like that's what you actually walk around at exactly. Um, so, I mean, like places like, you know, like one championship, you know, I hear they're doing a better job at like having people fighting closer, like in their weight, weight range. I hope that, you know, this is something that eventually it'll it'll have a runover effect and apply to different promotions or I don't know. They just feel like with laws, laws are just slower than the progress of people it's sometimes so weird you it's, know that's a fuck that's a super true statement and i feel like this is one of those things it's like everyone's feeling it like yo why are we doing this let's just fight right but yet all of the regulations and laws and things that how it has been going this whole time haven't changed yet yeah and it just kills me change takes so long yeah like why 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 does it have to be so hard to fix issues that just are seemingly so simple i mean that's a whole human <laughs> internal uh, process issue right there all the, it's the it's a, it's a I don't know, some denial of just or embracing change yeah embracing truths of things and being open to uh, accept that maybe in, in a lot of cases that maybe you're wrong but then at the same time it's not just you it's like if we all as a whole were more like yeah just understanding of like 
the conditions that we are in, they'll will understand that okay, well let's go back and reflect and look on this matter and yeah, how can we make this better because you know, but everyone's yeah. caught up in their own stuff. Yeah, it's it's so tough, man. It's so, I think everybody we're all just like out living our own life and like on the macro scale when you start looking at just a lot of the regulations that are in place and the laws mm-hmm. and like the people who are making those, they just kind of just freely do what the fuck they want to do <laughs> because everybody, everybody's out here fucking just trying to, trying to live, man. Yeah. You got small businesses struggling right now. You got mm-hmm. people who are trying to just put, you know, gifts under the trees and right. have nice dinners and shit for the holidays and whatnot. And yeah. people just trying to just keep the fucking lights on. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, damn this is a lot to keep up with right like you have to work on you know work deal with your most basic needs that you need to have met before you can think about the needs of other people yeah Yeah. fuck it's hard out here Brittany. yeah dang but you've been taking care of your needs you talking about yoga fucking (laughs) art (laughs) i've been trying yeah like i like i've been reading a lot of stuff i've I've been really working on just like you know taking in knowledge and not only just taking it in but actually trying to not trying i told myself that that word is a trap yeah Um, applying it um to actually witness the change that i want to see in myself yeah so and if i want to i'm like i always said that i wanted to do this or i wanted to be able to have time for this well then i can you know make time for that right and actually probably put that as a priority yeah um building you know the kind of habits that i want to have yeah ultimately lead me to being happier isn't that the is that not the goal to be happy yeah like you know what i mean yeah i think a lot of us are trying to find happiness in yeah. some regard regard or another or at least like comfort maybe or i don't know mm-hmm. I think it just depends on the person i think everybody does want to be happy though yeah in whatever way that is you know so. yeah that's so true. I've found that, um, like, I don't need nearly as much, like, money to live mm-hmm. as, like, like you were talking about at the very beginning, like, growing up, we're all just told, like, you need to do this to, like, make it to the next grade and to the next grade. And then it's like, oh, so you, now you can go to college and then so you can get this job. And then you get locked down with fucking loans and, and mortgages and, yeah, and car notes and you just... You just you just have this whole fucking way in the world that was just thrown on you yeah. because you're told that this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But in no time are you really ever able to actually take that time to figure out who the fuck you are. Because your brain isn't even, I say this all the time, but your brain's not fully developed till you're 25, 26. So it's like you're making all these really heavy decisions and you, you honestly don't even have the capacity to think these things through. And then now you're locked down and then you're just in this rat race and nobody ever really gets the time to figure out like, Hey man, it really doesn't take that much to live or be happy. Yeah. Like you just, you just got to figure it out for yourself though. Yeah. But you know what? Um, I feel like a positive from this time is I feel like these conversations are happening more than they've ever had. Yes. Just about, maneuvering to your happiness which does not lie in like the physical things of like money and wealth and you know right. status is more like your inner inner self yeah. i feel like we're having more conversations about that and people are becoming more aware and more people are jumping on that journey of themselves i and, agree and i feel like that's a good momentum and good shift so that you know because i think that e- either way it goes when people are happy internally they're going to end up putting more positive and happy things into the air that's going to right. have a ripple effect and impact other people in a positive way too so yes i'm hopeful in that aspect yeah you know we we were just in that generation who just got the wrong fucking message yeah for real I mean, we, <laughs> <laughs> like everybody told us that we needed to go to school because that was the way to success when really it was like <sighs> that was maybe the way to success for like maybe a generation or two before us mm-hmm. and then we were just we were just at the wrong time yeah but now and some of it it's like social media is such a good and bad thing but yeah. some of the good thing is like man you can see all these different people doing life in all these different ways yeah and you can figure it out from there like yo it doesn't have to always be what you what you envision what you saw and now you have media a, yeah. a place to be able to go and also search and see many different uh, visions and walks of life that you may not have seen before. Yeah. I kind of feel like we're in like 
we were like we're like kind of in the middle of it between like these two different like times like I see this and how it was then but I'm also like literally in the middle of this transition of these things happening yes. and these things shifting and moving um so I, I, so for me sometimes I kind of feel like a little resistant because I'm like I like these things <laughs> and I'm like I'm not sure about this <laughs> but I'm like all right well I gotta figure out how I can still like keep me and go with the changing times too you know yeah uh, so but overall i mean you take the good you take the bad with the good right yeah it's for sure all a process mm -hmm. so what have you been reading oh well i just started um i actually um got this little collection the four agreements the collections that come with that you, okay so what is it's the four agreements and there's like a fifth agreement and that was is there like two other books with that yeah um so originally I was looking up to read the four agreements and I yeah. realized that it came in a set with the mastery to love and the mastery of knowledge. Okay. And uh, and the four agreements is like the mastery of freedom. Okay. So I guess I, I read them out of order. So I've been reading the, the mastery of love to mastery to love um, okay. out of that little collection. Oh, right on. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of, a lot of, it's funny because I talked to my friend. We, we, we like to, like, you know, talk about these kind of books and apply it to our lives. And yeah. She's reading a book. Uh, I think it's called Atomic Habit or something. Some yeah, habit. Atomic yeah. Habits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so a lot of things. Sometimes she says stuff in that book, and I'm like, yeah, that sounds like this over here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and like when you're reading these things, you're like, yeah, you know, I, I knew that. But then you're like, you know, man, that's really true. And sometimes yeah. just, like, reading something. In that moment, you know, like, it gives you time to really reflect on it and, like, see it, like, in real form and, like, in yeah, life. Yeah, 100%. And it's just, like, it's, it, it, sometimes, again, some of these things are just very innate, like this mm -hmm. knowledge, but it's just maybe the way that they, they worded it or yeah. maybe just the time in your life when you read it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's like when you watch a movie that you used to like when you were a kid. Yeah. And then you watch it now and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> or, or for me, like you'll catch a whole bunch of adult humor or different things. Yeah. It's just whatever you are in life is, is how you're going to receive that message. Yeah. And that's, that's how I felt with every book that I've been reading, like th doing this whole little, you know, they're like, oh, this is your awakening. I'm like, I guess, yeah, this is the awakening. And whatever. <laughs> 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 I guess I can see why they're calling it that because it's just like, you know, opening up your consciousness to um, just different things that, like you said, like, I, I, I'm a believer that, um, you know, a lot of your truths and this within you is just a matter of like, you know, looking at something in a different perspective uh, or allowing yourself to see it from a different perspective to gain you insight on, you know, your life. Um, and I feel like with everything I've read, I definitely felt like it was just all, all very much a timing thing. Like yeah. I needed to read that right then and there because at that exact moment I was going through something that was just like that. And I'm like, yeah, man, I knew that. But here I got this man in this book over here looking at me right now. <laughs> I feel attacked. <laughs> I feel seen. Yeah. You know, and it's like it makes me more like wanting to like, okay, I'm put action to it this time. Like, yeah. oh, I don't need to apply it. That's so true. It's It's like – it's like you do know your own truths, but mm -hmm. when we're younger, we're, we feel so much like social and external pressure that mm -hmm. you'll really deny a lot of the way you feel internally just to like maybe fit in or whatever the case may be. But then like as you get older, you just start accepting yourself more and more and then you can start being honest with yourself. You're just like, fuck it. This is who I am. Like, like it or not. Like, yeah. And you just summed up half the book that I'm reading. <laughs> Cause literally that's exactly what it's about. Like, like the mastery to love is being able to like see everything as love and, um, love is powerful, man. Yeah, it really is. But we carry around fear instead. Because we we've been emotionally wounded, uh, the, the, those reference from it, like yeah. you said. Yeah. Um, it, there's that, and it's like, I feel like just the way a lot of culture is, we, we just attach things to that word that make people feel weird for some reason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, even here in the Midwest, like we're not a very hugging culture. Yeah. But like, I'm sure like in California, they hug all the fucking time. Yeah, before, yeah. All the fucking time. That Every people are, the, the, the energy is different. People are more like open and, and warm, like kind of warm in a sense. They're like In a way, yeah. Yeah, yeah you'll <laughs> you fuck around though, you start getting real woo-woo-y real fast. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh-huh. Yeah. Man. Yeah, but I I definitely agree with you though. Like um as a kid like you you were more free then and then yeah. Because you're trying to fit into society um and you want to be accepted. Right. You start like kind of living through that that image right whatever you feel like you have to do to fit in Mm -hmm. and then eventually just start accepting yourself yeah Yeah. we're social creatures and you know we want we we thrive we we desire the need to connect and so yeah a lot of that's just an innate feeling but some what i've what i've been taking from a lot of the reading is that we first need to connect with ourselves yeah you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anybody Mm -hmm. else and that's in just so many regards yeah. So sometimes that just takes periods of just like being alone. Yeah. Just like figuring out who the fuck am I and like what do I enjoy? Like what are my habits? Like what like who am I? Yeah. Which and is not easy to answer always. Right. And then even that question changes, you know, year by year. And so that's like a continual process throughout your life. 100%. You should never be the same person that you were yesterday. Like if you're really learning and growing right and, and trying to become better yeah there's that word try try (laughs) (laughs) you gotta become uh intentional with your actions and yeah you know and all that good mushy stuff but (laughs) Uh, what'd you think of that 75 hard book oh yeah i read that and i was like yeah i'm gonna do the challenge i i mean um program britain it's not a challenge i know it's a program as I as I was like, as I thought about it, and I was, and I had a lot of reflection through that book. It was that that book is. Andy's an interesting cat for sure. He's very intense. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I like, but but I also have my teammate read it too, and I agree with it too. It's like I like the straightforward um, speaking in the book. You know, just get right to it. Yeah, there's no bullshit. There's no yeah. fluff in that book. He was just like, this is the program. This is the methodology. This yeah. is the why. Yeah. Um. But I definitely. Um, I, I I I agree, and I've I really felt like the program definitely touches on the different things, like just like when it comes to gaining like that type of strength and confidence within yourself, like not just physically, but it's mentally, it's emotionally, it's you know keeping promises to yourself and believing in yourself, and actually like letting your actions follow through and doing it, and yeah. learning like not to make those excuses. No excuses. At yeah. All. I went to EJ's wedding, and I was on 75 hard. I didn't get to eat half the food. I wasn't drinking. I still let Deja do all that shit. I left the reception to go do a 45-minute walk in my dress shoes and all that shit. Yeah. Came back. <laughs> Look at you. You a real one. Go ahead. I fucking did it. Yeah. I fucking did it. But there really is something about just, like, just, like, just making a promise to yourself mm-hmm. and just sticking true to that. Although I found on 75 hard, it just it makes it for me – I've been, I've been doing a lot of reflection because I, I think I finished it, I don't know, a couple months ago. And uh, I'm not the nicest person when I'm <laughs> <laughs> when I'm in that place. Yeah. It's like I'm operating on all cylinders. Like I'm fucking, I'm in shape. Like I'm reading. I'm fucking, I feel great. I got, but I'm just like, I have no tolerance for any bullshit. Yeah. And I'm very straightforward and I have a lot of aggressive energy. <laughs> <laughs> almost almost like in a bad way like i don't even necessarily enjoy it i almost become a little judgy a little judgmental <laughs> i gotta find this like balance so i'm not like everybody's fucking weak because <laughs> i'm over here grinding yo, fucking I'm killing it grinding. you guys are fucking pussies <laughs> <laughs> i so feel you <laughs> that like yeah that but because it's because you're being super selfish in that moment you really but it's are. not a bad selfish it's like you know what it's about me. Yeah. You know, this is like my wellness. But at the same time, the balance, right? Because you still want to keep that harmony with people around you. People are important. Yeah. People are super important and we need each other and we need to connect. And you can't just like judge people because they're not in the same place that you are. Right. And then also I just had to figure out just to like, hey, man, just relax. Just fucking relax. <laughs> just Because, <laughs> man, I had so I, I had um, I went on a little little journey um with my brother and a friend we were like out in the woods and we were doing some lsd and (laughs) and i'm just like i've been thinking about that experience since we left i'm just like i just don't think i was very nice (laughs) (laughs) i'm like damn man like i should have been way nicer i just keep thinking that like i don't feel like i was as nice as i should have been i'm just like damn man like i feel really good in that place but 
I just gotta like focus on just being nicer to people. <laughs> yeah. It's a challenge sometimes. People, but, people piss me the fuck off. Yeah, I don't know. So, <laughs> well, then, then maybe you should just read the Mastery to Love, and then you'll just practice, you maybe know, giving love, putting the love out there. And yeah. Well, stuff. I'm being nicer <laughs> now than on seventy five hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I'm still pretty disciplined, but yeah, that's what I do. I need to read that. What am I reading right now? I've been reading this Jocko book, uh, Leadership Strategy and Tactics. Oh, okay. It's pretty good. You ever read anything by Jocko? No, I haven't. It's good stuff. It's it, he's so he's like a former Navy SEAL. Are you familiar with who he is, Jocko Willink? Mm. Okay, so he's like a former Navy SEAL. He actually lives in San Diego. He has a really big gym uh, down there called Victory. Mm-hmm. Um, he trains with like Dean Lister and uh, I, don't, I don't know who all like is out of his gym, but he's like former Navy SEAL. Um, he has this company called Echelon Front, so he basically uh, like goes around the country and like teaches leadership and shit. And he's like one of the best guys on the planet for leadership. But I'm really into him. But I always try to keep in mind that like not everybody is for everybody. Because yeah. like I'm always like, Deja, you should listen to this. Or you should read this. And the people that I like to get messages from, like she doesn't like to get messages yeah. from. So I try to keep that perspective, but man, he's just, he just knows his shit. He's, he's like, he just, he just, that book is just very, um, just like practical. So it's just mm-hmm. like, here's a strategy. Here's a strategy. Here's a strategy. It's just like all these things that you can do just to become a better leader. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's good. It's good shit. It's yeah. Good. It's good shit. I like it. Yeah. That sounds, it sounds good. Like what you said though, I think is like a really good point. Like, there are so many different voices and people like with their perspective and their knowledge. And sometimes like who you hear from makes a difference too. makes all the difference. Like how, how, like, so it's like, I think that's the personality base and like, you're more receptive to hear things from people who um, speak your language in a way. Yeah. Um, Well, certain tones and pitches are more, you know, just more appealing. Mm -hmm. So I kind of experimented with that. Like we were driving to Chicago and I wanted to listen to a podcast. So I wanted to listen to a health podcast. And I I typically at the time I was listening to this guy named Sean Stevenson, who has a podcast Mm -hmm. called The Model Health Show. And um, I've tried to listen to him before with her, and I just don't think his voice quite cuts it. But he'll have guests on there, and some if he has like a woman guest on there, yeah. I'll play that, and she'll fucking listen to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, this is it. Like you just need certain voices. Yeah, <laughs> and I wonder, I wonder how like what's the percentage of like women who would prefer to hear a woman's voice yeah. over a man? Maybe because yeah. honestly, I, there I listen to a lot of pod, I have podcasts I listen to, and I definitely listen to. The women's voices are like just more appealing to me, you know. Yeah, I, like, I, I don't know, just it is what it is. That's she what. was listening to an audio book and it was a guy reading it, but I think he had like a, like an English accent or something, oh. and I, I, that seemed to be appealing to her as well. I'm like, ah, this is murdered my ears. I can't. <laughs> I'm like this narrator, <laughs> I cannot deal with it. But she liked oh, it, so it, it is so interesting how certain pitches just are more appealing to people. <clears throat> yeah. I would like that. that would, see, that would, I would just take that a different direction, learn how to work on my English accent. That's a good move. <laughs> That's a good move. I just need to figure out how to just manipulate the accent to get what I want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But reading, like, definitely I feel like just overall – Oh, that, that's what I was going to say, because um, that book reminded me of a different book. I, I listened to an audio book, uh, The Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. That is a fucking phenomenal audio book. Now, wait, were you, were you the one that told me? Probably. Yeah, yeah, you was. I think I made a post on Facebook, yeah, and I, I was you. like, I need to read, and that was the one that I chose. I told, oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. You wanted an audio book, right? Yeah, yeah. I told everybody about that audio book, because nine times out of ten, I prefer a book. Like, I prefer the physical book. That's just mm-hmm. my style. Yeah. I really like those. But when it comes to an audio book, there's not a better audio fucking book than that one because it's like a mini podcast between every episode, like yeah. between every chapter. You I get, really like that. Oh, my God. It was so good, right? Yeah. I, and I really feel like I'm glad that I listened to this book instead of reading it because I enjoyed, right. like, hearing his – well, I know the guy who was reading it was a different guy, but it, it still made me feel like – Yeah, but he's a beast too. His name's Jesse Itzler, and that guy's a savage too. He, like, he's yeah. really good at what he does. He's a great speaker actually. Yeah. So, yeah, it it, wor- it works out really well because mm-hmm. they just have these conversations and you get to mm-hmm. hear more in depth about David yeah. Goggins. That you wouldn't get in a book. You would never get that in a book. Yeah. Man, that – I cannot think of a better audio book than that one. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like over audio books at the moment. 
I have I have all these in my library that I just haven't been reading mm. or listening to. I found like I feel like I get distracted easily. Yeah, when I'm listening to things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I'll just start getting I'll start zoning out into other thoughts or I'll be doing mm. something and then I'll just I'll miss like ten minutes of the book. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right, whatever. This is like a twenty hour book. I don't need those ten minutes. But still, I'm missing stuff. Yeah. I'd rather just read. Yeah. I listened to that that book intently though. Oh, I'm I glad you liked did. it. I'm glad you like yeah. it. I tell everybody that. I tell everybody. That. I'm even if they've read the actual book, I'm like, dude, you should check out the audio book. Yeah, because that one is phenomenal. I agree. I was telling Ben Newman that actually, he's a uh, he's a performance coach mm-hmm. and speaker, and um, I think he posted like he just read that book. I'm just like, bro, <laughs> 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 I'm like, check that out, please. I don't know if he did or not. Yeah. <sighs> Put that under the umbrella of no excuses, cause man. Yeah, that's a good one. He's such an interesting human. I was just checking out David Goggins' Instagram the other day, and he just ran like 200 miles, just on a whim. Like he was visiting somebody for like Thanksgiving <laughs> or the holidays or some shit down in Florida, and his friend was about to go do it, so he did it with him. Oh no, snap! What the fuck? No. What the fuck, Brittany? <laughs> I've never even ran a half marathon. I feel like a I feel like so like such a weak human being because <laughs> like I know I could run that distance I just haven't done it yeah and this dude's over here running two hundred miles just just, be, just because yeah like oh. if right now you're like hey let's go run half marathon I'm like ah <laughs> I don't know about that one uh, I don't know about that one Brittany I might might like cramp up or some yeah, shit like catch me on that one later <laughs> damn. Damn, I've been so. Do you do you keep up with running? <laughs> it makes me think about all the complaining I do about the little runs that I go on. I'm like, oh man, oh man, running has. What's funny is that I remember like, all right, I'm done with track now. <laughs> <laughs> no more running. <laughs> but nope, it still is a part of my life. Especially like, it has been like one of my biggest things that I do. Especially when it's like, yeah. Yeah, getting in, getting my weight down. Like I run a lot. That, that's your go-to. Yeah, and I'm realizing like, okay, this I can't keep keeping up with all these miles on top of all the training that I do too. Yeah, because it's a lot. Um, but when it comes to like, I feel like running still as much as like you know maybe I have a love hate relationship with it. I still will always like definitely well, incorporate it. Be a part of your life. Yeah. 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 It's it's needed. I feel like it's just good cardio. Or if 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 you know you substitute it out for the elliptical. Sometimes I do when yeah. my knees were trash. Yeah. But I still like running though. Yeah, I like to run on trails. Yeah, I don't. I don't like. I don't like running inside. No. I can't. Like the treadmill is too boring. Yeah. That's one thing I enjoyed when I was in California, going for runs around there. It was yes. so nice. You cannot really get any better than like just the atmosphere of like you got the beach there you got the mountains you just you have so much wilderness right there and it's not far away and it's but you do also have like fucking mountain lions and shit (laughs) (laughs) fuck you up yeah fuck you up real quick yeah when we took a training trip to big bear and oh man it was really beautiful really nice you Um, see a bear no i did not thankfully um <laughs> but the like the elevation and man i was dying up those hills but i was like man this is still so mm-hmm. nice yeah like at least i'm in pain in a pleasurable place <laughs> right right um but yeah definitely more of an outside that's one of the hardest things about being back here is like Man, it's so cold. Yeah. And it's different, but. Yeah, today's a nice day, today though. Today's nice. I am running after I leave here. <laughs> I'm going to head over to, like, Creep Core Lake and yeah. go get some running in there. It's a good move. It's yeah. a real good move. Yeah, today's a beautiful day. You know, it, man, yeah, it, the, the cold is not my jam, but we do have really good, like, conservation here, which is nice. It's just not, it's not as nice as California, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. because we don't have mountains. Yeah. There's just something special about the mountains. Yeah. I mean, the ocean's cool. Don't get me wrong. I do really love the ocean, but I I really like being in the mountains. Mm. I was driving through uh, Topanga Canyon mm. whenever I was in L.A. Have you have you been there? No, I haven't gone 
Oh, okay. So that part. Okay. It was fucking trippy, just like driving through there. It was so nice and it's just so vast. And like, you see where some of these people are like fucking living. I'm yeah. just like, holy shit, like people live out here <laughs> <laughs> every day. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I, I only visited LA one time, and I probably saw more of LA than people who live there their whole life because I just got in the van and I just started fucking driving. I drove <laughs> everywhere. It was crazy. That's like one of my favorite things to do is just like, Smoke weed and drive around. Yeah. Just get lost and just keep on driving. See as much as you can see while you're there. Pretty much. Isn't that the goal? Pretty I much. Think, yeah. yeah. It I was want to. it was dope. Yeah, I just I, but I just couldn't believe just how beautiful some of the like just the countryside was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean we give like the West Coast a lot of credit for like all of the mountains and the ocean. It's really beautiful too, but like I mean, there's still beauty in... It's beautiful here, too, though. Yeah. Like, that was my original point. I got sidetracked. It's yeah, super beautiful here, too, bringing though. Bringing it back full Bringing circle. it back. Missouri is actually really nice. When I lived yeah. in San Antonio, I really missed how green it was mm. here because it was so, like, yellow and dry down there. Yeah. I can see that. And we have beautiful vegetation here. Man, there's a lot of cool shit to do. Yeah. There really is. I agree. Like, you can go hiking down at, like, Tom Sock Mountain mm. or, like elephant rocks you ever been down there i haven't see there's all these places that i haven't even checked John out yet johnson shut-ins yeah none of these places no <sighs> come on Brittany. how long well, i went on my awakening when i went to california <laughs> i'm coming back and now i'm going back to enjoy all of these things that have been nestled right underneath my nose <laughs> uh, that's good i can dig it i can dig it so you got fresh eyes yeah Dang. I'm going to be able to experience it in a different way that yeah. I wouldn't have experienced it before. Because you're just a whole new person <laughs> right now. Just different fucking energy. Yeah. And just so mellow, man. Just, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, I've been saying bro a lot. That's my you know what word I picked up out there was rad. Rad? <laughs> I, just say, I started saying rad yeah, a lot. Anybody like, saying, like, saying that? Like, that's rad. Well, maybe it was just the guy I was hanging out with, but he said rad, and I just started saying it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say bro anyway. Yeah, I think that's just universal. Yeah. It's become a neutral Every greeting. Everybody's a bro and a dude to me. Yeah. This is what the fuck it is. Yeah. That's I'm, what's up, Brittany. Dang. Yeah, I've been just chilling. I mean, what else, what else can you, what else can you do? I've tried the, like, I mean, I haven't tried it, but stressing about things and being all just worked up about things, you know, just, yeah, just take it as it is and just let it go. It's one day at a time. Yeah. When, like, really, it's just, we realize all these things that you try to control yeah. that you can't. Yeah. And it's just your mind trying to control it, really. And it's just like, well, give space and give room for something else. 100%. Let that shit go. For real. I mean, you can't control everything. You can really only control yourself. Yeah. And how you react to things. Yeah. And then the mindfulness piece and just like when 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 shit happens, like you're able to just flow from what just happened in the past and come back and ground yourself into the present. Yeah. Which is nice. Good well, good practice. It's not yeah. a all of a sudden snap your fingers, you're mindful. No, it's a practice. Yeah. So, Takes reps. And all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. So how are you recovering? Like you're fucking grinding, right? You're fucking up your body, obviously. By your <laughs> like, what are you What are you doing to like? Obviously, you're like meditating. You said you did yoga. You're trying to like do some shit like that. But like, what else are you doing for recovery? You going to like take an ice bath? You doing any like cryo? Do you do the sauna? Like fuck the sauna. Fuck the sauna. <laughs> I love the heat. I, I mean, yeah, it's nice, it. but it's I need so some good. more time away from it right now. We're still too close. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, <laughs> See shit. what I mean? I don't need negative associations with things like that. That's true. It's like the bathtub, like, you know, doing like hot baths. I'm like, man, thinking about getting like, that's something that I would really do like on a daily, like is like take hot baths. Yeah. And, like bubble baths and stuff. Yeah. But the only time I've been in a bathtub is when I'm cutting weight. <laughs> I would really like to change the narrative of that. <laughs> yeah, you should probably fix that association. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, nah, um, I really, I, I would say I've, I've done a lot, a lot of more of icing. Yeah. Uh, I had when it was hotter in back, you know, uh, in, in California, I like bought this little tub to do ice baths and stuff. Um, we had uh, Kelsler's uh, Family Wellness in um, Orange County out there, and they've been super instrumental to, like, bumps and, like, you know, 
getting me back right for like bumps and bruises and Are they things. Like a chiropractic office. Yeah, massage. massage, just like like sports medicine, everything. Mm. So like, they're like Dr. Kessler. He's the man out there. Um, so that that I, I miss miss them being out there. But um, so I guess right now I'm just. Um, when it comes to like cryotherapy, I, you know, I honestly still have yet to actually try that or yeah. haven't like floated before. I would like to do those things. Who's knocking on my door? Hey, man. It's it's knocking like they the police. No, it's, it's, probably a package. it's probably a package. Yeah. Fucking um, that time of year, man. Just packages just mm-hmm. be coming. Yeah, I don't. Um, uh, cryotherapy is cool, but I'd much rather just get in a nice bath. Yeah. Yeah. It, but the cold sucks so bad. I prefer the sauna. I really do. It just makes me feel so nice and relaxed. Yeah. That's a good way to, like, decompress. And but they're both great. Yeah. Now, massages. I don't know why more people don't talk about massages. Yeah. Because it's the best. It really I, is. I wish I could afford to get, like, two massages a week. Cause I would like an I would get hour and a half massage every fucking time, and I would do it twice a week, and I would just fix all of these knots. Yeah. Cause my back is all sorts of fucked up. Yeah. Like I, I go in there and like they're they're digging and they're digging. I like I'll give an hour. They're like, you should probably do longer next time. And oh, I was yeah. like, shit, man, that costs more though. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Well, shout out to Terry at Body Restore back in oh, uh, Timoyama. Like sh- we had like a massage therapist like right in the gym. Oh, for real on yeah. site. Dang. Yeah. And I miss you, Terry. But oh Dang. man, she's she's great. Oh you man. You guys are living the good life. So speaking of that, I'm like, yeah, man, I, I feel you. Like twice of like weekly for sure, minimum. Yeah. Like you do so much, like and it's so important everything every every little thing you can do to like undo the damage that you're doing to your body you should do so yeah like what is the i forget the exact quote about like however many hours you spend actually training like equates to like this many amount of hours of recovering really you know there's like an equation for that i forgot exactly the number but it was pretty high like if really you, not like a one-to-one but pretty close yeah like like if we it's like i'm training say i train like four hours out of the day um like i need to spend like, like a large amount like stretching and, and like two more hours of recovery you think yeah like wow. icing and like so we have all these great um um things different like um, tools and resources to help you know going on with like body care yeah. and everything like you know different types of uh, muscle guns and yeah. stem and yeah it's all, all good the, shit yeah yeah you utilizing all of those kind of things just yeah. becomes a whole big package deal it's when so it comes, important yeah i just got a so right yeah i have one of those too those are pretty cool yeah yeah and uh i use the tim tam i like the tim it's just a one of those there it's like one of those massage guns Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Like the Theragun or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Pick a brand. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's many out there. Yeah, those things are cool. I like those. They yeah. work. They yeah, work. Yeah. They fucking hurt. I fucked up my forearm, and I was like, damn, man, I don't know what I did. And it turns out I just, like, strained just, like, all of these extensor muscles, and uh, I just had this crazy deep knot in my fucking forearm and i would just like work it out like i'd put i put a heavy ass kettlebell on it <laughs> and like just roll it out and i hit it with the tim tam and shit and like and i hit it with stem and it's it feels amazing now but mm-hmm. it, it was like i I let it go for too long it's totally my fault yeah. but for like six seven months like it was hard it was fucked up yeah. i i just kept rolling through it i'm just like yeah. oh my arm's fucked up but let's just keep doing jujitsu anyway <laughs> Because I'm a psychopath, and I have an addiction. I have a real addiction. <laughs> <laughs> all right, first step is, you know. Admitting it. Admitting it. Yeah, but if you don't do anything after that, <laughs> all I did was admit it. <laughs> but, you know, uh, better, maybe better self-care is good, but being addicted to jiu-jitsu is actually, is it, yeah. is, isn't, isn't, is it benefiting you more than is, you know, doing your For own? For my mental health. Yeah, well, yeah. there you go. So. I'm going to do that till I die. Yeah. Yeah, but recovery is super important. Yeah. That's yeah. the balance. That's what's up. Yep, so what's yep. next, Brittany? Oh, man. <laughs> and we kind of talked about a lot of it, but like, what, like, what's what's on the in the distant future for you, or the the near future for you? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you want to focus on? 
Yeah. Um, I guess we were, yeah, we were talking about that. Like when I think about long term, I'm like, let me start a little bit short, shorter term here. Yeah. Because it's, it's kind of hard to look too far out. Um, especially things never pan out. Yeah. Or just, you know, with what I'm doing right now is all kind of like, if this, then that, or if this, then that is kind of how I am yeah. right now. Um, cause I kind of feel like I'm in this stage of like, I can do a, a handful of things. I can make a couple different moves. So, you know, I feel like with time I'm like, all right, I'm going to gravitate towards the direction that I need, that that would be best for me at that yeah, time. I'm trying to keep it all open right now. Yeah. But the, the, the main thing still, um, or true. Like I'm going to study for this exam. Get that knocked out. Yeah. Um, because ultimately when, cause being in California, one of the, one of the things, and especially with like the sport, is I want to be able to. I've always wanted to be able to do multiple things that I'm passionate about. Yeah. And I'm okay with working a job for the you know the, for the the greater of the needing to make meet meet you know needs meet 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 my needs and things like that. But ultimately, yeah. that's not the long term thing. So I want to be able to. Um, have the professional work that I do in between fighting and, um, you know, and training and everything to actually have purpose and meaning to me, to my life. So yeah, that's why I really, you know, really wanted to settle down and like get my license and counseling so that I can start that journey. Um, yeah. cause I have some, you know, a handful of different things that I want to do in that Avenue that I can, you know, also be doing in the background while I'm still training and, you yeah. know, pouring into that sport because i still feel like i still have a lot to learn and yeah still have more to give so how many more years you want to get to fighting how many more years yeah i know that's like a hard question to even even think about because it's like oh now you're trying to ask me to like put a fucking time frame (laughs) on this thing i mean um because like i guess it's just like one of those things it's like you think you'll do this for like another like until like your late 30s like I can. Well, not not. It's not whether you can. I know you can, but do you think you think you're gonna have the desire to do? Because some people like you. You talk to them, they're like, "Yeah, like I, I'm a fighter. This is what I want to fucking like." EJ, for example, I don't think there's ever been a question of his mind that he wasn't gonna do this up until he yeah. just turned 35. Up until yeah. this time, like me, for example, I was like, "Ah, I don't know how much longer, like into my 30s, I'm gonna want to do this." Yeah. So it's just like. You yeah. don't have to answer that question. If well, that's, I don't want to like it's conti- put that bad energy on you. It's, it's, it's not bad energy. It's obvious. I mean, there's definitely things that I think about um, yeah. because I feel like, all right, from 30 to 40, what are you going to do? Because I don't know. I kind of feel like after 40, I'm not thinking about being for sure. Like I'm not thinking about being like a full time professional athlete. You right. Know? Yeah. No, for sure. Um, so I, I feel that. like within like I'm in this period of a lot of transition of like you're, there's things I still want. You're right. Like, like for for example, but it's like I can't control it. Like I do want to have kids one day, so wh- wherever that falls in this mix, that right. could like that will change the trajectory, that, that, and that could change how I don't know how that's going to impact how I feel about you know sports and athletics because I do I am also in a position to where I have multiple things that I'm passionate about too. Right, and so I could focus on this for a little while and be doing this you know sometimes and then like that could shift right but like as of right now because i don't i'm not really even or putting that in the picture i see for sure like i would estimate i don't know like yeah. 35 like like mid 30s like 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 mid 30s like i need i would want to be yeah. where i want to be yeah. in this sport like if i'm not like there by that time like i need to have some reevaluation time for right. reevaluation yeah I, yeah i don't think it's unfair to be like all right well this is where i this is how old i am this is where i am in my career and it's just like all right well in five years like if i haven't gotten there then maybe i should start reassessing and figuring out what i want to do like, I don't feel like that's an unfair conversation to have with yourself. Because yeah. some people, they're just like, I'm just going to keep fucking doing this forever. And I'm just like, all right, bro, well, have fun with that. <laughs> I feel like it's hard for me to answer that question because I, I'm, I I base 
that off of my happiness. Yeah. As long as it's still making me happy, making happy. I'm going to still do it. That's but fair. if it's not making me happy anymore, and I'm going to think about what does, and I'm going to ch- make that change. Yeah. And I can't tell you how long this is going to make me happy. It's yeah. making me happy right now. Yeah. And that's the mindfulness piece. That's fair. That's a real <laughs> fair way to look at it. I think that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. For I real. mean, I can have ideals for, you know, what I would like to see if yeah. I could, you know, really pinpoint it. I'd be like, yeah. I, I mean, like, I would, I would, I would continue doing this um, as long as my body will allow. Yeah. Like, if I can still stay at this, like, this peak of, top shape i'll keep doing it yeah you know but at the same time like we've talked about yeah (laughs) accepting you know the changes in our bodies and things so i'm like i don't know what's gonna happen i'm hoping that everything is still moving and grooving (laughs) (laughs) i think i think you like nailed on the head like how happy are you because like physically i can still fight people but it just didn't make me happy anymore so i was just like i'm good i'm good jujitsu makes me really happy so i think yeah i think that's a good way to to approach it yeah. Yeah. So I'll just keep checking in with that. So right now I'm like, look, I'm still on a mission. I still have, you know, things that I want to do and achieve and yeah, um, places I want to go. And so that's what I'm still working for, you know. Yeah. And I just keep checking in as I go on. That's dope. And well, man, you're grinding for sure. You're for sure grinded. Something will, will come to fruition. Yeah. Planting those seeds. It's all about mm-hmm. planting seeds and just harvest it later. Yeah. And so that's what I'm saying. It's like I planted some stuff. Which flowers are gonna bloom first? Right. You know. You know, like how is it gonna come out? You know, I I want to see. I've been nesting and fertilizing and watering and you know gr- grooming all of this, and I'm just ready to see it all. You know, yeah. blossom. Yeah. Well, we are quite literally entering winter here so <laughs> <laughs> i will be at home painting flowers yeah so you're know, kind of going through a hibernation period and then when it starts getting warm then just boom back out in the world yeah and blossom. you know what what's funny is that i kind of like that's kind of like how i um conceptualize this time yeah. it's like I, i'm leaving sunny california <laughs> 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 and I'm coming home in in winter you're coming home at the worst time as far but as it's, weather. yeah exactly right but what's happening is that I need this time to just be in yeah. and nestled in and just like yeah that almost kind of like reflects the the short season that you're in right now and mm-hmm. then you're like just kind of transitioning with like the literal seasons yeah yeah that's literally how I feel that's dope yeah <laughs> <laughs> so like you wow. might not see me I'm still here I'm just like more <laughs> in solitude it's cold I'm not coming outside I'm bumbled up um you know working on all of the you know the the little things that you can do from the comfort of your home yeah you know and when it's springtime again you like all right i'm ready i'm back in action back out back yeah. out in the world yeah sun's out guns out exactly, exactly. i'm working on my guns you know that's how you hurt people <laughs> <laughs> dope well Brittany, we've been talking for an hour Thank you so much for taking this time. Oh, no problem. I know, like, you guys have so much to do at home right now. Oh, man, I know, <laughs> man. Just <laughs> time. Yeah, time. That construct. It's not real. Yeah, it's not. Like, you make, uh, make you can make quote unquote time. Yeah. For the things you want to do. So That's true. I wanted to do this. I wanted to come and talk to you. I'm glad that we got to catch up. Yeah. I'm glad to be back. You know, I mean, it's it's not California. We talk like make it seem like California is so like just the best everything. But there's really great things about St. Louis that yeah. I miss and that I am so grateful and appreciative of. You yeah, know? you know, I was telling Deja actually. Like, I think California just sounds kind of attractive because like this is just where we live. It's always greener on the grass is always greener. Yeah, type shit. But really, man, when you look at all the craziness in the world, like while tons of people are like fleeing california and new york right now nobody's fleeing missouri like we're fucking good I drove, <laughs> like, we're, like we're good <laughs> like life is cool it's not expensive like things are good here like i'm not i'm not hating on it at all actually if anything i appreciate this place more than anything yeah now. i i i i i pretty sure i'm 98 percent sure that you won't catch me buying a house out there no. <laughs> you know like mm-hmm. way the ex- i know it's expensive but no I- i'm good on that aspect it's a just, house that's a million dollars there is like a sixty thousand dollar house here 
I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's just the the real estate itself. It's yeah. just like, fuck. And none yeah. of those lots are that big. Yeah. Unless you're like really, really rich. Yeah. Like, exactly. Like, like uber wealthy type rich shit. Yeah. Like those dudes are fucking killing it. Which good for them. I'm trying to yeah. figure out how I can do what they did. <laughs> right? <laughs> so if you see me living in California, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I came up on a mat lick. <laughs> hey, that's what's up. Well, dude, Brittany, thank you so much. Um, this will probably be out like in a couple of days. So. All right, cool, thanks. So I'll put your shit in the show notes so that way they can check you out. All right, sounds good. All right, all right, everybody, till next time. Yeah.